Today we're working on a septic drain field. The drain field has gotten real slow running and so I'm going to show you how to get some instant relief you know for your toilet and shower as well as to do a quick pair that's it's only going to cost you probably about 200 or less and you can um, get a, probably a good another 10-15 years out of it. Quick disclaimer here, being that this video is being viewed by people all over the world, the solutions in this video may or may not be in accordance with local county building codes. It is not the intent of this video to suggest doing anything illegal. There is much gray area in the code when it comes to the repair of a drain field versus the replacement of a drain field, for which you will have to decide if your situation is a repair or a replacement. In no situation should the solutions in this video be performed by anyone charging a fee to a homeowner or be done to prepare a home for quick sale. Rather, it is the intent of the video to aid homeowners who don't have the four to five thousand dollars typically required to replace a drain field to extend the life of their drain field for 10 to 15 years. Over the years we've performed these solutions multiple times for people who were not charged for this repair of which we still have knowledge of the properties they resided in and can attest to the fact that many of these properties were done over 15 years ago and are still working fine. Likewise, if there is a shallow well within the speed of the drain field, consideration must be given to the effect drain fields have on the quality of drinking water. I'm going to do a quick explanation of how a septic system works. Suppose that this is your house, here's your toilet, there's a pipe that comes out of the bottom of your house and comes horizontally over into a septic tank. The septic tank is the most part filled with water. There'll be a little bit of sludge in the bottom, which is basically being consumed by bacteria. And then there'll be an airspace above a crusty layer that's usually on the top of the water. The tank lid actually usually is in sections, and you can come and dig up the in section and usually tilt it up to be able to get access to your tank. There'll be a pipe that comes out of the septic tank. It's either going to have a straight pipe coming out, a T, or a curved down. I like the ones that have the curved down. I'll explain later. And coming out of there, I like to install a clean out so I can see how much water is standing in my drain field pipes. But a lot of systems will not have this clean out. Going from there, you'll come into a distribution box, and the distribution box will then divide into several different pipes to go into a drain field. This is looking down on it from this direction. I'll switch over to a top view. Here's the distribution box, and the distribution box, like I said, will divide out into four or five different runs, and there'll usually be a gravel bed you know, that kind of encompasses this whole thing. Some systems will have environmental domes. There'll be several rows of them you know, going out like this instead of having these individual pipes. In my experience, the gravel will outlast the environmental domes by probably three or four times. So what's going to be demonstrated in this video is how we're going to come into this main line coming out of the septic tank. We're going to put a T in it and then we're going to do what I call a vertical gravel bed. Very easy to do, very inexpensive. And the gravel bed will have an end cap on it which will allow for a future expansion if we ever totally consume the gravel bed that we add. To diagnose your issue with your septic, first off it is possible you can get clogs right here where the fluid enters the septic tank. If this crusty stuff builds up enough, it'll block this entry pipe and it'll actually back up from there all the way up into your house. That's the first possibility. Second possibility is if your drain field has gotten so saturated with solids and roots and all kinds of things that it's just basically getting to where it runs slow and it's getting to the end of its life. To be able to diagnose what your issue is, if you can in any way get access either to see what's going on inside the septic tank or dig up this pipe that comes out of the septic tank and drill a small hole in the top of it. If fluid comes out of the top of the pipe, then your drain field is clogged and it's done. If there's no liquid coming out of the top of this pipe, you probably have a clog right up here where it enters the septic tank. For which a plumber with a good jetter or maybe a snake, you know, could clear up for you. If you're all stopped up right now, to get some temporary instant relief, all you need to do is come, come onto the drain field side of your septic tank, dig up this pipe, dig a trench around the tank and take a hammer and knock a hole in that pipe. The trench has to be below the level of the pipe and you'll see that all the water will start coming flowing out and it'll go around the tank in the ditch that you dug. The hole in the ditch will only give you some temporary relief until you can enact some of the other solutions I have in this video. So first off, what we had was on the drain field side of our septic tank. Here's our septic tank right here. I always like to have a clean out, you know, that's installed going into the drain field. And the purpose of that is not as much to do a clean out on it, but to be able to open the cap and see if there's any standing water in any of your drain field pipes. 
And that tells you that the drain field is starting to run slowly and it may need some attention. See on this one we pull the cap off of this drain field pipe and the water is actually just standing there and it'll go down slowly. The first thing you can do to get some instant relief overnight is knock a hole in the side of the pipe that comes out of the septic tank and dig yourself a little ditch around the edge of the septic and you know for a few days you know the water can actually just soak down to the ground in that little ditch. You want to make yourself a probe. So what we did was we took a half inch T and we bought this long piece of rod from Home Depot or Lowe's. Actually used a little bit of Bondo filler, you know, to cement the rod into the T. Put it on a grinder and we put a pointed tip on the end of it. So what we're going to use this for is to locate our drain field. So from where our septic tank is, where you have your pipe coming out of your septic tank, you want to go around and you'll stab this down into the ground. And when you hit something, you know that's a drain field. Okay? And go ahead and move around so you can find the, the perimeter of where your drain field is. When you've gotten to an area where you're away from the drain field, you should be able to take this rod and shove it all the way down to the ground, you know, without hitting anything. So go ahead and mark off the corners of the existing drain field, because we're going to leave that intact and leave it hooked up. So what we'll do is we'll add another leg to the existing drain field to kind of give it a little bit more horsepower and give a little more longevity to it. Dig a trench right away from the location of your septic tank. And what I like to do is I dig these trenches extremely deep. So this trench is going to be about starting off maybe two, two and a half feet wide, and it's going to kind of taper down on the sides till we actually get down to a shovel width. Our sand is very percolating, so it takes a lot of the drainage very easily. And it's probably a good idea to wait until you actually have your gravel and everything ready to go back into it before you get down to that last foot or so, because you don't want to have a cave in like you see right here where part of it caved in. You'll have a lot of displaced dirt. So if you don't have a place for the dirt, then you need to have some type of trailer to haul it off and dump it somewhere else. Hey, we'll be back in a little over 60 seconds and we're going to pause real quick to see if you need any eternal repair. You might say, eternal repair? What's that? Well, hey, consider your whole life and all your life. Have you ever told a lie before? I have and I'm sure you have too. We all have. Also consider, have you ever stolen something even no matter how small it was? I'm sure you have and I have too. The whole point of where I'm going with this is those two rules, lying and stealing, those are two of the Ten Commandments in the Bible which define what sin is. So if you've broken even one of those rules, no matter how small it was, that means you've sinned, and we all have. The punishment for sin is going to hell, or eternal separation from God. The good news is Jesus Christ came to this earth. He didn't lie. He didn't steal. He didn't do all these crazy stuff that you and I have done. He was totally without sin. He was sacrificed on the cross for my personal sin and yours. He went to the grave. Three days later, he defeated death, and now he sits beside the Father in heaven. The whole point of why he had to take that punishment on the cross was he was taking the punishment for your sin and for my sin. But it can only be accounted to you if through faith you believe in who he was, what he did, you submit to him as your Lord, and you repent. And when you do that, you can have eternal habitation with Jesus and the rest of the saints for eternity in heaven. You might be saying to yourself, hey, I'm a good person. Surely God wouldn't send me to hell for all the nice things I've done for people. But the truth of the matter is the Bible says, by grace you've been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man or woman should boast. There is no amount of good work you can do to earn your righteousness before God. Only faith and trust in what Jesus has done for you on the cross. Hey, let's get back to our video, and I'll have a little more information on the eternal portion of this at the end of the video. Take a look in your local directory and see if you can find one of the recycling centers that sells recycled crushed concrete. And this is the cheapest way to get your gravel for your septic bed. They have a product called number four, which is about an inch to an inch and a quarter gravel. This is the, probably a good size to use in your drain field. I've been. They actually have scales and they'll weigh your vehicle on an empty trailer. And when you exit, they'll weigh your vehicle on a full trailer. This is our five by eight dump trailer. We have a load here of about 4,000 pounds. The trench we're working on is about 20 feet long. It took two loads of this trailer, which cost us about $120. When we put the felt in here, the felt is going to push up against these walls. Everywhere we have the felt contacting the outside dirt is where the water is going to percolate out of the drain field and disseminate into the ground. So by having a vertical drain field, as the water comes into it from the pipe that's going to be closer to the top of the drain field, it's going to drain down through the rock until it gets to the bottom. And my th reasoning behind that is that when you have a little bit of sediment and stuff, that really silty, fine stuff that comes out of the septic tank, as it goes down through the rock bed, it's going to attach to a lot of the rock. And I'll have a lot more surface area that can absorb that silt as compared to some of the domes, where when you have a dome, the only place you have is just the bottom dirt in the bottom of the dome, which will clog up very fast 
you know, as the silt gets spread out over the bottom of that dirt under the dome. In my experience, having done quite a few of these, the ones that we did that were gravel with the felt lined in the ditch, I've had those that it's been getting close to 20 years and we've never had to go back to them. The ones that we did the domes, you know, we usually get about seven, maybe eight years out of an installation that had domes. The dome will only give you percolation through the bottom of the dirt that's underneath the dome. When you do the rock bed, you have all of the walls and the ceiling of your rock bed that can disseminate water as it comes into the drain field. So you get a lot more surface contact you know, with a ditch with gravel than what you'll get with the domes. Additionally, making the thing vertical is a lot less digging than when you do them horizontal because you have to get down first to the level of where the fluid is in your septic tank to be able to disseminate into the rock bed. And if you're doing that on a horizontal dig, you're going to have to dig down that first foot and a half or two feet to get down to that point. And then you're going to have to go horizontally a lot of dirt. The next thing you do is you go ahead and you get your felt. This is this material that you want to line the walls of your trench with. This is the soil separator I'm using. I bought this at either Home Depot or Lowe's. And that's what we're using to line the ditch with. We're getting all this on the sides and then we can start putting our gravel you know, down through here. I put a little bit of gravel here just to kind of hold everything in place as we're putting all the pieces of felt in. We're using a wheelbarrow to go ahead and load our ditch and I'm pouring it really slowly so I don't mess up the cloth on the other side. As you're pouring the gravel into your pit, one thing you got to watch out for is a lot of times the gravel will try to separate and move around your cloth. So you got to do something to keep it kind of stationary so you don't get spots where the gravel is up against the dirt. The one thing that you can do which really kind of seems to help keep it in place on the walls is go ahead and take some three inch nails and you can actually just insert them right into the side of your dirt wall you know, like that. And that'll help keep the thing in place while you're putting the gravel in the hole. As I begin to fill my trench with the gravel, when the gravel in my trench gets up close to the water level in the septic tank, then it's time to go ahead and put this long pipe down through the center of my trench. This pipe comes from Home Depot and it has pre-drilled holes in it. As the water from the septic tank comes in here, it'll leak out into this gravel bed. Remember how I explained earlier, this being a top view diagram, here's your house, here's your septic tank, here's your old drain field. And we came down and we put this T right here in the pipe that comes out the back side of the drain field and we teed into it to run this new pipe right down through our new gravel bed that we're installing. When you put your pipe down, you do what is called cracking the bubble. So the bubble is just a little bit over the line on your level. What you do not want to do is have a real fast downhill slope because these things just need to float along down the trail. What I did do was at the very end of my line, I went ahead and put a removable cap so that if I ever do have a problem with this thing getting plugged up or getting fully saturated, I can just tie onto the end of it and run out another 20 feet. When you get all the gravel into the, your pit, then you want to fold your cloth over from both sides and make sure there's no leaks for sand can get down to the top of it. And then begin starting to put the dirt back on top and you'll be all done. If before you start your dig, you spread tarps out, then when you get all done and you put the dirt back in the hole and you begin to clean up, then all your grass and your landscaping will still be in nice condition and won't be all beat up from your shoveling. Some people would have brought a backhoe or a big tractor in here. They do it by hand. There's very minimal damage to your grass and landscaping. Back to a nice, beautiful lawn again a lot quicker. Most of the lids on the septic tanks come in sections. And if you go to the outside section, you're able to actually prop it up and tilt it up like I've done here. A lot of times it takes a crowbar to get it initially lifted on the edge. And then you need to have something on the front and the back to prop it. You have to be very sure on your corners that there's no way that they can slip in. Because if you drop that lid, into the bottom of that tank, you're going to be in a lot of trouble. When you sit there and look inside, most of the stuff floats on the surface and actually can be shoveled out. There's all kinds of things you'll find. Somebody flushed a pill bottle. Someone else flushed the cap to a shampoo bottle. There's the cap to a shampoo bottle. So you get all kinds of treasure in your septic tank. In this particular installation, they used a T on the inlet to the drain field. And what I don't like about the T is that whenever the drain field starts running slow, the water will increase over the top of the T and all kinds of solids and different things will start pouring into your drain field. To get the most life out of your drain field, instead you want to have an elbow that just goes straight down and that way you won't have this problem with filling your drain field up with all that trash. Here's a picture of a newer installation of a septic system. This is a filter which they recommend that you put onto the exit side of your septic tank. I do not like this setup myself. You can certainly be your own judge. You have a layer of sludge that's in the bottom of your tank, and over the years that layer will start building up and building up. 
if you pump your tank very regularly, you can keep this layer down. But mind you, my parents went 30 years without ever having to pump theirs, and they were just fine. This type of system here, this pipe extends down a lot lower than the actual elbow curving down than what I was suggesting. And when this layer of sludge gets up to the bottom of this low-hanging T, then no longer will the water be able to come up through this filter and exit out the tank. And what will happen is the water in the tank will rise and the scum layer will start pouring into the top of the T and it will go right into your drain field and you'll be done. By using the down curved elbow, which does not have the open top on it, then if your septic drain field begins running a little bit slow and the water level does rise, then all those solids and scum won't start pouring over the top and going into the drain field. Hey, as far as the eternal portion I was talking about, if you're not sure you know who God is, I encourage you to just to pray like this. Say, Lord Jesus, if you are real and you are out there, I pray you would reveal yourself to me in a tangible way. And when you make that prayer, he's going to answer it, and you will know he is real. At the point you know he is real, and you're ready to accept him as your Lord and Savior, the gospel is so simple. All you have to do is just pray like this. Say, Lord Jesus, I recognize that you are the Son of God. You took the price for my personal sin on the cross. I surrender my will to your will as Lord of my life. I repent of my sin. Thank you for loving me, forgiving me, and accepting me into your eternal habitation. That's just how simple it is. But the catch is that just saying those words won't do anything for you, only unless the heart believes the words that you're speaking. For the Bible says in Romans 10:9, if you confess with your mouth Jesus Christ is Lord, which I just did, and you believe in your heart God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Salvation only comes through faith and believing. Hey, if you get a chance, visit our website, eternalrepair.com, where we have a lot more information about your walk with Jesus Christ. That's eternalrepair.com. Thanks for watching.